library is filled with books. And many books are filled with cool stories. Some pretend stories and some real ones. I love a good story. And did you know that Jesus was a great storyteller? Jesus enjoyed making up simple stories to teach big things on how to live God's way. His stories were called the parables. We can read them in the greatest book ever, in the Bible, in the New Testament. Parables are short word pictures, a comparison. They bring images to our minds. As the greatest teacher ever, Jesus knew word pictures are helpful to learn and to remember important things. His stories were about familiar things to the people, such as salt, bread, sheep, farming. Jesus captivated crowds with the parables, and he also shocked them too. So, prepare your mind and your heart to picture and be changed by today's parable of Jesus. What? Do I see a gift? I wonder who brought this gift? Like it's not my birthday or anything? But hey, I don't mind at all. I love gifts. Oh, hey there. Just so glad you tuned in today. You know what? I'm just so curious to see what this gift is. Okay, let's check it out. No way. There's two. Oh, wait till you see this one. Look how beautiful it is. Wow, it's just so nice. Like, I, I almost don't want to open it because it's just so pretty. And there, there's a fork. I don't know what the fork is for, but I guess we'll find out, eh? Should I open it now? Eh, you know what? I think I'm curious to see what the next one is first. Because there's two, remember? Okay. What? Okay, uh, wait till you see this one. This one is not so good looking. It's actually pretty, pretty pitiful. It, it looks like it fell in the mud or something. Okay, the big decision now. Do I open the nice looking one on the, that looks nice on the outside or the ugly looking one? Uh, that's an easy choice. I'll go with this nice one first. Here goes. I wonder what it is, because you know the wrapping is so beautiful. You, you know, it must, what's inside certainly must match the beautiful paper. Okay, sorry, I'm not good at doing this all dainty. I just go for it. Whew. Okay. Oh, look how beautiful, even this is so pretty. Sardines? Like, who would give me sardines in such a beautiful box? I mean, like, I guess this person thinks I like sardines, but I don't. Well, I think I don't. I just remember my mom eating them and they smell so bad, but, but she did give me a fork, so I guess they're maybe, they, maybe they taste good. Oh, okay. I know I'm strong, I can do this. <laughs> Whew. That took a while to open this jar, but I finally got it. But it is pretty smelly. But maybe they taste better than what they look. Let me see. Oh, these are little fish. Looks like they're still swimming. This is like they're still moving. Uh, okay, sorry. Anyway, it's outside. I'm going to pick up the mess later. Well, this gift did not match the nice wrapping. Oh, well. Okay, I'm going to open the other one, and hopefully it doesn't match what it looks like because it's pretty pitiful. It looks promising. It's a nice box. Hmm. Got sardines stuck in my teeth. Oh. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's so lovely. Does 
That's a beautiful gift. How surprising in this ugly package. Look, it's like a, a lady that loves reading the Bible. She loves God. Ah, oh, I love this. You know what? I'm just so curious who gave these gifts to me. Maybe there's a note that I didn't see in here. There is a note. Okay, no name, but there's a Bible verse written on it. Okay, 1 Peter 5 verse 5. It says, dress yourself in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's a pretty good verse. You know what? Everyone needs to practice being humble, right? And it looks like there's just kind of a lesson to be learned here, right? The, the Bible verse and the gifts. I'm just not sure what it is yet, but this verse definitely makes me think of a parable of Jesus about pride and humility. You know what? Let's find out which parable it is after our worship time. Enjoy this time. Put your heart into it. Celebrate God. Praise Him. Get up from where you are and just join in. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. He died for you and me. But on day three, Jesus rose again.
darkness into your light My heart surrenders to your design You gave me purpose, so I give my life I'm giving you all of me Out of the darkness and into your light to love you like you love me with all my heart and all my soul with all my mind and all my strength I'm giving you all of me uh, father you are so good you are so powerful I love you amen ah we have so much to learn about how to live a godly life a way that honors God it's all in the Bible in God's word to us Jesus taught a cool story to emphasize the importance of having a humble heart, a humble attitude. This parable, it's called the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. This story is about two men and it's found in the New Testament in Luke 18 verses 9 to 14. You might be wondering, what, what is a tax collector? Well, in Jesus' time, Tax collectors were Jewish people who worked for the Romans. Their job was to collect taxes of all sorts from the people. The Romans didn't even pay the tax collectors. They figured they, they could just make a wage by charging people extra taxes. So naturally, this is what the tax collectors did. 
uh, some took advantage of this situation, charging people way too many taxes. They were stealing from people left and right. And stealing from people? That is not good. That is bad. It's a sin. But many, be many people became rich this way while making people become poor. So of course this made people hate the tax collectors. This gave them a bad reputation. People didn't want to hang around them. You might also be wondering, what is a Pharisee? Well, in Jesus' time, Pharisees were a group of Jewish leaders who would teach people about the resurrection of the body. And they also had lots of knowledge about the Old Testament, the books of the laws of God. And they taught people how to observe God's law. And you know, they tried very hard to observe those laws too. And that's so great. But they also invented their own laws, rules and regulations that were harsh and sometimes didn't make sense. Now that's not good. As leaders, they burdened the people by forcing them to obey these unreasonable human laws, not caring about them. Not good at all. And on top of that, they were very prideful, thinking that they were the best, more righteous. But they were not. They loved parading their good works to show off. So one day, Jesus chose to tell a story about a Pharisee and a tax collector. He wanted to teach an important life lesson about humility because Jesus knew that some Pharisees were too confident in their own righteousness, making them look down on everyone else. I'm sure the people were very curious to hear what Jesus had to say. Jesus began this parable by saying that a Pharisee and a tax collector went to the temple to pray. And at the temple, the Pharisees often enjoyed praying out loud to show off their prayer in front of others. Let's see how this Pharisee prayed. Oh God, thank you that I'm not like these other people. I am way better than the robbers, cheaters, and big sinful people. Oh dear, I'm certainly not like that tax collector over there standing in the corner. He looks so pitiful. What a shameful life that he has. I am so much better than he is, as you know, God. I fast twice a week. I'm a pretty good man. Plus, I give you my tithes and all my income money and do all of these good works. What kind of prayer was that? This was a prayer from a prideful heart. The Pharisee was boasting, bragging about all of his good works, how he was better than other people. You know, doing good works is awesome, but it's wrong to show off about it and put other people down to look good. Now that's bad. That's a sin. The Pharisee, he did not ask God for help to forgive his sins or to change his heart. He didn't even see his many sins. Now we know the tax collectors, they were not better. They did not have a good reputation. Since many of them, they would steal money from people by charging them too much on their taxes. In this parable, the tax collector was also praying. He did so at a distance in the temple. He was beating his chest while praying. Oh God. I am not worthy. Oh Lord, I am so not worthy. I am not worthy of your love, oh God. I'm not even worthy to look up into the heavens. In your great love, please have mercy on me. You know that I am a sinner. I am so sad for all the sins that I have done. Forgive my many sins, oh God. Did you notice how the tax collector's prayer was way different than the Pharisee's prayer. The tax collector's prayer, it was not boastful. 
He was praying to be heard by God and not by people. He stood at a distance to be alone with God. This was a humble prayer, a prayer from the heart, from a broken heart. The tax collector saw the ugliness of his sins and he wanted to get rid of them. So he begged God for his forgiveness. He turned to God with all of his heart, asking for his help to be changed by God. After this parable, Jesus told the people that the sinful tax collector returned home forgiven by God, but not the Pharisee. The Pharisee thought very highly of himself, and he did not see the need of God or his sins. He was too prideful. Jesus finished this parable by saying in Luke 18 verse 14, For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. By saying this, Jesus was telling the people that God hates a prideful heart. But he loves a humble heart, and he will reward humility. This parable was a valuable lesson about humility, practical for the people then and for us now. Now, I really see the link about humility with the two gifts and this parable. The lovely wrapping represents the Pharisee's life. His life looked very good on the outside, right? He did good works, like paying his tithe and fasting twice a week. But on the inside, it was a different story. His heart was pitiful with prideful sins, like, ah, smelly like sardines. Ah, not good. He thought he was better than many people. He didn't see his own sins or his need for God's help. Now, this pitiful wrapping represents the tax collector. He had sinned, and he knew it. This explains why the wrapping looks pitiful, like pretty ugly, right? Just like sin is ugly. But you know what? He brought the ugliness of his sins to God with a humble heart. He came to God as he was, knowing he needed God. He confessed all his sins to God, and God forgave him. This explains why it was a beautiful gift inside this wrapping. God did beautiful things in the tax collector's heart because he came to him with a humble heart. A humble heart is beautiful. Like this gift is beautiful. You know what? Now I want to read this Bible verse again from the note. It's just, it's beautiful. 1 Peter 5 verse 5 says, Dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You know what? And Jesus wants us to have a humble heart with people, and with God. Yes. The Pharisees, they had knowledge and zeal to obey the laws, but they missed out on the most important thing, to live humbly, loving God and people. These are God's greatest commandments to obey. It doesn't matter how much we know. What matters is how much we love and obey God. God and love others. With prideful hearts, the Pharisees missed out on a beautiful relationship with God. They didn't see their need to depend on God's wisdom. With this story, Jesus wanted to give them a clear picture of the ugliness of pride to provoke them in to provoke in them a desire to change. Maybe you're thinking, I'm certainly not like the Pharisees. Well, Jesus knew we are all guilty of pride sometimes. And he knows how pride is so bad for us and hurtful to those around us. So this parable is for us too. Jesus perfectly lived in humility. 
He is our greatest example. Humility, that's depending on God. Every day in prayer, Jesus asked Father God to guide him, to serve him well on this earth. His humble heart showed that he trusted and loved Father God. So if Jesus, the Son of God, depended on Father God every day, well, we surely need to also. A humble heart also shows people God's love for them. Jesus humbly served people every day by teaching them, healing them, and caring for their needs. Jesus even gave his life, died on the cross for our sins to save us. Jesus did that for you and for me with the greatest love and the most beautiful, humble heart so that we could be reunited with Father God. The tax collector knew he needed to be forgiven of his sins. We need to be forgiven too. And Jesus is the one who forgives our sins. Have you chosen to follow Jesus? If not, would you like to give your life to Jesus today? If you want to, pray with me. Ah, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. You humbly died on the cross for me to save me so I can live a life with you and go to heaven one day. Ah, today I am giving you my life. Forgive me for all the sins that I've done. I choose to love you and obey you. Uh, I love you so much, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed with me with a sincere heart, tell your family this great news that you chose to follow Jesus. Following Jesus is the best decision ever. God has good plans for your life because God is good. So pray lots, read the Bible often, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, obey God's word. This is how you will grow to be really close to Jesus and learn to have a humble heart. And guess what? A humble heart is a winning heart. So get ready for this. It is time for a game. Woo! So we will be acting out different scenarios. We'll be, some of them will be about a pitiful, prideful heart, and some will be a lovely, humble heart. So if it's prideful, you shout out, Dad. Dad. But if it's humble, you shout out, Praise, Praise God. God. I'm so good at school. School is easy for me but I know that my talent is from God, so I give thanks to Him. Today, I was able to help someone in my class who had trouble with math. I was glad to serve in this way. Praise God! I'm so good at school. I'm very smart. My parents say so. My teacher too. School is easy peasy for me. I think my friends know that I'm the smartest in the class and <laughs> Did I tell you I'm the best looking one too? Bad. Today, me and my friend, we chose to draw a picture and do the same thing. But mine is, is so much prettier. Did you know that I'm the best at drawing, coloring, and crafts too? I love it when people look at me and they think that I'm really good. Bad. Bad. Today, me and my friend, we chose to draw a picture and do the same thing. I, I really like mine, but my friend's picture, it was super nice too. And so I told her, your picture is so beautiful. Huh, my friend is so talented. She's the best. Praise God! Today, my brother told me it was wrong of me to lie to my dad. I got so mad at him, I kicked him. I know he was right, but I didn't like his reprimand. I just don't like being told what to do. Bad. So my brother told me it was wrong of me to lie to my dad. I didn't like his reprimand, but I mean, I know that he's right. So I thanked him for, for being honest with me. So I went to my dad and told him the truth. 
and I ask God to forgive me. Praise God! Today, we had a snack. Everyone ate lots, right? The snacks were amazing. Then I saw the big mess and I thought, I will go and begin cleaning up. No one needed to ask me. I can do stuff like that, right? To help people, others, right? Jesus loves serving people. I should too. Praise God! Today, we had a snack. Everyone ate lots. The snacks were amazing. Then I saw the big mess and I thought, oh, blah, someone else will pick it up. I have stuff to do, you know. Anyway, I deserve to be served. Of course, of course. Bad. Bad. Today I was trying to put a big box on top of the shelf. I couldn't reach. Some nice gentleman, very tall, came along and asked if, I, if he could help me. I said, no, I'm good. I've got this. I don't need help. Bad. Bad. Today, I was trying to put this big box way up on top of the shelf. I couldn't reach. Some tall gentleman came along and asked if he could help me. I said, perfect timing. Yes, you can help me. I would love your help. Thank you so much. Praise God. Kids, being prideful is not good. It's a sin. It's hurtful. When we're prideful, we hurt people and we hurt ourselves too. And people do not like hanging out with someone who brags all the time. But when we're humble, we bless people. We serve people. We show them God's love this way. If you have a humble heart, people will be drawn to you because of your kindness. When we have a prideful heart, we insult God. Pride makes us forget that our talents come from Him. Pride makes us forget to ask God for His help. God really hates pride. In 1 Peter 5.5, 5, it says, God opposes the proud. In that same verse, it also says that God rewards a humble heart. He gives grace to the humble. It's, it's awesome. I, I love this second half of the verse. I definitely know what I'm going to be choosing. Being humble is the way that I want to live my life. And I really hope that this is what you'll choose too. So let, let's pray together. Jesus, I'm so glad that you shared this parable about the Pharisee and the tax collector. It's such a good eye-opener for all of us to have a humble heart. Jesus, Please forgive me for all of the times that I have been prideful, like thinking that I am the best at stuff and putting people down or thinking that I deserve to be served by others. Forgive me for when I forget to ask for your help. Holy Spirit, help me to be humble. In your name, Jesus. Amen. I really like this Bible verse. I want to read it again. First Peter 5 verse 5 says, Dress yourselves in humility. As you relate to one another, for God opposes the proud. Ugh, don't be a smelly sardine, people. Okay, but God gives grace to the humble. You know what? I think the very best way of dressing ourselves in humility should look like this. Lovely wrapping on the outside with a beautiful gift on the inside too. Humble all the way. Let's love God and others with a humble heart.